open it up properly. Okay. Oh dear, whoever's got the baby, could you please mute? Do I stop this? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, it's, so if you're not um, a presenter, could you please uh -huh. mute? Let's just mute try and see if we can. Oh, hang on, I've muted City now. If you're not on mute, you could please mute yourself. Got an echo somewhere. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So welcome to our um, Make the Most of TM6 class. Um, if you haven't met me before, my name's Mandy, and I know there's a few people on there who I haven't seen before. Um, welcome. What I'd love you to do, first of all, is um, just pop in the chat, which is down the bottom, if you own a, T a Thermomix already, um, which model it is that you own, please. That would be really helpful. Um, I want to really know if you're looking to see what the benefits are of the TM6. Thanks, Vicky. Um, or whether you uh, have a TM6 and want to make the most of it. So um, just interested to see. Cool. Yes, way. Oh, look at you. Every, everything for Joanna. <laughs> That's cool. All right. I wanted to make the most of it. Thanks, Belinda. Wonderful. All right. So, um, so, so far, uh, we've just got... Yeah, maybe a couple of people who don't own one. Um, so what I want to do is just um, <laughs> just let you know um, what, what the offer is that started today, because it's a really cool offer. If you're thinking of getting a TM6, then um, this is a really good offer. Um, I've got it here somewhere. When you purchase a TM6 between now and um, the 9th of February, as long, or as long as stocks last, you get this um, mini vac thrown in. That's worth three hundred dollars. Um, it's made by Forbert, which you probably know is also the maker of um, Thermomix. And before they made Thermomixes, they made vacuum cleaners. So, um, so that is a really cool, um, you know, really cool bundle, I reckon. And there is another bundle that you can do, which um, where, where you can get they've got a really fantastic um, upright vacuum cleaner, cordless, um, with a um, a mop head, which um, Irene was just was in, in the chat. She's going, oh, my God, I've just used the mop head because it actually mops and vacuums your floor at the same time. You can buy these outside of the, the deal too, by the way. Um, but I am the world's worst cleaner and washing my floor has always been the pits because I've had to wash it and then get down on the floor and just dry it because I just got smears everywhere no more with my wonderful um, vacuum cleaner. So that is another thing, but talk to your consultant about that if that's something you'd like to know, but I just wanted to know about this. Um, and of course, the, the other way that you can get one, even if you sign up today, um, like Edith is gonna think about because she came into the team early, um, then um, you can still, you can get one of these if you need to buy a TM6. So um, yeah, so absolutely follow up with your consultant if you're interested. Now, I'm just going to make sure I've got all that done. Yeah, so if you could stay on mute whilst we're, um, whilst we're presenting, we've got the chat, ask questions in there. Boone and I will be keeping an eye on the chat because tonight I'm not cooking. It's over to the rest of the team, which is really exciting for a change. So um, we're going to start with Wendy. Um, Boone, can you find Wendy somewhere? And Wendy is going to show us sugar stages. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks. Hello everyone, um, I'm Wendy obviously. Um, I'm just gonna switch cameras. So Boone, if we can flick over to the other camera view, that'd be awesome. I'll turn this one off now. Can you find a Boone? Sorry, I found it, but I uh, there isn't a replay spotlight. Oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, we're just trying to. Um, oh, no, there we go. Yeah. Okay. All there good. We are. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Off you go. All right. So we're making honeycomb on the high heat setting. Um, I've logged into Cookie Do. I've saved it to my recipe for today. And basically, I'm just going to follow the instructions. So those of you that don't have a TM6, 
Quickie Do is just a feature that we have that's linked to our smart devices. So it's linked to our phones, our computer, our iPad. Whatever we do on those devices also transfers to the machine. So, Wendy, I'm just going to interrupt you just one second. Can you yes. angle down a little bit so we can oh, see the sorry. screen? I forgot to do that, didn't I? That's all right. Is that Perfect. better? Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. There we go. I'll turn the light up a little bit. I forgot to change that. There we go. Um, so today I saved honeycomb. We're cooking that today. All the instructions are on here. So I simply press start cooking on the green button. And it just gives me a little bit of a instruction to begin with. And it's basically saying to guarantee the success of the recipes using the sugar stages, please follow the exact quantity and description for all ingredients. The recipe should also be cooked immediately after placing sugar with all with the other ingredients in the mixing bowl. So sometimes with cookie do we say it's guided cooking and we can be a little bit I'm not lazy but a little bit unguiding with the quantities but this recipe we have to kind of be exact because it has been tested and tried um, and we have to be very careful because it's a sugar setting recipe with the high heat we have to be careful that we we don't just guess the quantities and the scales in the machine with the tm6 are in one gram increment so it's very precise so with this recipe we do have to listen to cookie do and listen to the machine and guide all the way. So we're just going to press next. So it wants us to line a square cake tin. It says 18 by 18 with baking paper and it's gotta be higher than the tin on the side. So that's just so that the honeycomb can rise as high as it can. And on a heat resistant mat, when you finish, when you pour the, the liquid in, cause it is going to be very hot. So we're going to sift one tablespoon of bicarbonate of the soda and set aside, which I've already done. And that's in my little jar, my little tub here. And it wants us to weigh and pour in 300 grams of white sugar. I've already weighed that just to speed up the process this evening. So I'm just going to pop that into the jug. Now with this recipe, we're going to try and not get the ingredients onto the blade. So if I just lift the jug up and show you the blade, where you see the center part, we're going to try and place the ingredients all around without trying to get it onto the center part. Evenly around, even though we'll get a nice mix with the blades as it's operating, just to help the thermomix along there. Just a quick little comment there. So Wendy had pre-weighed her sugar, um, but I don't know if you noticed that when she took the lid off the Thermomix, the scales went to a minus and she didn't actually tear because she knew how much she was going to put in there. But that's one thing you need to be very mindful of is that your scales are on zero before you start weighing in an ingredient. And um, we're going to click next. Now, 80 grams of water. Again, this is where you cancel your tear to go back to zero. And I'm actually going to redo this one because I did spill some water out of my little bowl earlier. So I just do want to double check this one. So my little bowl weighs 329 grams. So I'm going to reset the weight. You'll see that goes to zero and we'll see how much water I lost before. So 72 grams. So luckily I did set some aside. So we're just going to pour that in to be 80. There we go, 80 grams. Now I could have left the lid off or lid on and put the water around, but we've got honey next and that's going to be a little bit more tricky to get in there. So it's asking for 20 grams of honey or golden syrup. I've just used the honey that's in the squeezy um, tub, just so I know it's at more of a liquidy consistency. And again, I've pre-weighed this. And again, I'm just going to scrape it out and try and get that evenly around the bowl just to help that it doesn't get stuck on the blades or in the center. And honey's always a little bit tricky. This one probably is best coming straight out of the, the jar. But again, it's just trying to get that perfect recipe, that perfect weight. Hopefully that will do there. Uh, 
Um, you can use golden syrup in place of honey if you don't have honey in your cupboard. Now it says without the measuring cup on, we're going to place the lid on and it's going to do 22 minutes, maximum, uh, maximum heat. And you'll see that the, the last icon, which normally has got this, the reverse blade or it's got this, the spoon or the, the speed of the, the blade, has now got a sugar, sugar cube to the spoon. That's the sugar setting. So this is the feature of the TM6 that none of the other machines have. So we're just going to turn the speed selector to start and that spins all the way around to the full. And I'll see you in 22 minutes. Thanks, Wendy. All right, Boone, we're over to Pearl next, please. Hi, everyone. And welcome to my cooking session today. Today I'm making deviled eggs. When I told my husband deviled eggs, he says, why not angel eggs? So in any case, they are eggs that I'm making. But I'm going to, uh, the recipe says to boil them with the simmering basket. Since the TM6 has got the egg mode, I, will, I have used the, I've already boiled them actually, but I'm I have used the uh, egg mode. I've used hard boiled eggs. So you don't need a blade cover. Just place your eggs right into the bowl and put about a liter of water. So I put water that covers my eggs because I did six eggs and leave it there for 19 minutes and it was done. Can you show us the screen please, Pearl? Sure. So this is the- Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Very great. we have got soft boiled, which my daughter loves and she swears by it. Her mother has tried so many times and has failed. So the soft boiled is the best one for her. Medium soft, medium, medium hard and hard. So I've used the hard and boil them. And then you go to nine, the hard, it'll tell you that it's there for 19 minutes. See, So that's what it happens. So let me come back to my screen. Go to my recipe, my week. And this is, uh, I've also made the mayonnaise made them at home. I've used the cooked mayonnaise, which is a no fail mayonnaise. So here we go. The green chili deviled eggs. So the advantage of TM6 is that you can start in the middle of the recipe. So here it says place water. I've done this in the Varoma for one minute. Immediately remove the simmering basket. All this is done. The egg whites separate them. All that is done. So I'll start with here. It says five springs of cilantro. I've got chilies, jalapeno chilies. I've got anchovies. Okay, let me put this. I've got some anchovies here. Just a can of anchovies. Next. Diced green chili, yes, I have done that. Now insert the measuring cup. For five seconds on speed five. So I'm just turning the dial. To five. Next. my egg yolks. Andy has taught us no waste. So there's a little bit in the bowl which I'll scrape down. No waste. That goes there. Half an ounce. If you see it's ounces, so it's an American recipe. So just pour. So when it's an American recipe, it automatically comes up in the ounces, um, the, the measurements there. And when it comes to cooking, someone gave me a really good tip that Fahrenheit to centigrade, you roughly half the Fahrenheit. 
and mustard, and turmeric. I've got turmeric here. I've got cumin and salt. Lemon juice. Your salt has gone through. Finally, ground pepper. Really important to have black pepper when you're um, use if you want the benefits of the turmeric. So the the is the curcumin in the turmeric, which is what beneficial as an anti-inflammatory. Um, but it really needs the black pepper to activate it and um, for you to get the best absorption. You can put whatever you want. You can even put cheese in it if you want. So this is my thing. I'll just put it in. I'll just do one and show you all, and then I'll do the rest. Fantastic. Yeah. It's runnier than I thought it would be. Uh, I, I think it's because of my mayonnaise, which is a bit watery. So this is what it is. Yeah, it Yum. should be a little bit. Yeah, it should be a little bit firmer. Yeah, it should. Have I'm sure it's delicious. Maybe, maybe refrigerate it for a little while. Um, oh, okay. just to help it firm up a bit. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Even even in the freezer, just you know, for half an hour, it might help to thicken it. And a then I can, bit. yeah, I can. Uh, so for those that are vegetarian, if you don't want to use anchovies, you can use porcini powder. It's got the same complexity of flavour, so good substitute for anchovies. Thanks, Irene. All right. Well, we'll leave Pearl to it, and um, we're heading over to Helen. Hello, I'm Helen. Welcome to my kitchen. So tonight I'm going to show you the new peeler slash blade cover. I wasn't lucky enough to earn mine through our incentives program, but I bought it from the mix shop. It comes in this nice little box and it has a little instruction manual to go along with it. So I'll just pop that down. So tonight I'm going to peel some beetroots. It's the only thing I've done with it so far. I haven't done any carrots or potatoes or any other root vegetables like that. But I'll show you how it works with the beetroots. So you have your bowl. Uh, the, blade, the bottom of the blade cover has these little prongs. So that's what always goes downwards. It's very much similar to the blade cover that you already probably have if you have a TM6 or a 5. So we just pop it in. The top of the waves, the top bits of the waves go on top of the blades that are sticking up in the air. So you just push it in and it just sits in. And if you give it a tiny little tug, it should just be snug in there. So to find your peeler mode, you just scroll across to your mode screen. Could you, I'm um, sorry, yeah. again, Helen. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. So to get to your peeler uh, mode, you just scroll across to your modes and scroll down on my machine, it's down. And it's the little peeler icon. So we just tap on that. It'll come up with some instructions for you. So it says to use the mode with the peeler accessory to scrub and peel your root vegetables mechanically with your TM6. Place the peeler on the mixing knife, making sure that the two higher sides of the peeler are on top of the highest position of the blades. Press the peeler down, making it secure on top of the mixing knife. Um, now it says to add 600 grams of water and up to a maximum of 800 grams of root vegetables. So let's go in and it will, it will go for four minutes, um, but you can increase it to a maximum of six minutes. So when you go in, can you see that okay? Yeah, we can see that much better. 
Okay, now we're going to put 600 grams of water in there. So I'll just go back to my, uh, to my scales, which are up top, scales. So I'm just pouring that straight in the bowl on top of the cover. Oops, and that was too much. I'll just take a little bit out. Probably doesn't wear it, matter too much if it's a little bit over. That'll do. Yeah, I don't want it frothing up too much. Well, that's true. So when you do put vegetables in, it does, um, the water will froth up. So to help keep that froth down a little bit, we just put in a teaspoon of white vinegar. Now I'm doing some beetroot. So all I've done to prepare my beetroot was to cut off the top and the bottom. I haven't scrubbed it or anything because this is going to do it all for me. So the recipe I'm going to do once these are peeled asks for 400 grams of beetroot. So I'm just going to pop them in using my scales. It's a little bit more, but that's fine because we can go up to 800 grams. So I'll just get out of my scales. I'll go back to my peeler mode. Back to my peeler mode. All I'm going to do now is pop the lid on. And then I just need to turn the dial and it will go for four minutes. I'll have a look to check and make sure I'm happy with how it's all peeled. If you're not happy, you can put it in again and do it a little bit longer. So this is a great um, tool to have when you're a bit time poor, you can pop them on, you can continue to prepare the rest of your meal, or you can go and fold some laundry or help the kids with their reading. It's a great tool to have. So I'm going to turn this on. And when you come back to me, I should talk to you like this. When you come back to me, I will show you what you can do once the um, batteries are peeled. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And we will move over to Irene, please. Oh, here she is. And beans, beans on them. She's onto it. Love it. Hey guys, I'm happy new year. This is the first session back. I know um, you guys were back last week, but I wasn't in attendance. So happy new year. Hope you have all a wonderful. All have, hope you all have a wonderful year. I am making the seared steak rocket salad. Um, so we'll just get started. So it's asking for some oil and some onions. I've just sliced them. Um, it's going to be how you present them in your salad. So that's going in for me. And I've just got everything in my little bowls. So my oil, got 20 grams along with, it's literally half a small onion, so it's a really, really tiny amount. And they're going to cook for two minutes on 120 degrees, speed one. So Irene, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to talk about Irene while she's there. We'll, we'll make, we'll embarrass her, all right? So um, <laughs> um, if, you if you don't know already, Irene is our um, Thermo Stars uh, representative for Victoria and Tasmania. She's made the most amazing cake, called Tropical Sunshine Cake. And um, there are five finalists. Three of the others are ex-chefs. And of course, we have the best. Of oh, four of the others are, oh my goodness, ex-chefs. And we have Irene, who, as a lot of you, thank you, Belinda, um, a lot of you will know, um, ha, uh, just gives us so much information, so much of her incredible knowledge. Yeah, that's her cake. Isn't it amazing? Um, we'll get us to talk about that a little bit in a minute too. But um, what we need is as many people as possible to vote for Irene. She puts so much time energy, emotional stuff into this um, into this cake. Um, and when I walked in there, she said, my mother's gonna kill you because I, I encouraged her to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she honestly, she did two weeks of annual leave to, um, to do her cake. She had people there all day from sort of nine o'clock till 6.30, I think it was when they left, filming for a little five minute video. Uh, and actually, I'll, I'll look for that as well and put that in the chat. But I'm going to put in the chat um, how you vote for Irene. And we all need you all to please do that. I've, my husband's voted for you, Irene, the whole family. Yes. I've got my daughter doing it. So we need as many people as possible to vote because we want her to win because she really deserves to win. 
So not, um, not only she deserved to win, I can tell you for a fact that the cake was so yummy, delicious. I asked her for a second slice and she said, it's all gone. Uh, I wanted the ice cream. She made an incredible <laughs> ice cream, which they wouldn't let her have in her um, recipe because they said she had too many elements already. And it was a caramelised white chocolate and miso ice cream. And I'm a bit of an ice cream um, fanatic and it was absolutely delicious. Yep. So the misos are really just to give that salty, umumptious, you know, umami. So it was delicious. Um, guys, I'd love you to vote. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about, well, it is, I'd love the, you know, bragging rights is great. Um, but at the end of the day, um, the winner gets to pick $5,000 for their charity of choice. And the charity I've chosen is, um, you know, basically do meals for home for homeless people. So that's 450 meals that they can do with $5,000. So I'd love to be able to, um, to do that. So I strongly, um, the link's in that um, chat or, you know, contact your consultants, they can share it with you. Um, share it with as many people as you can. I don't care if it goes all the way around the country to, you know, to India, to Greece, to Mexico, wherever, you know, you've got family, if they can all vote, um, it would be amazing because it can, um, obviously, that money can come in really, really handy for um, for the for, for the church um, that feeds those homeless people. Anyway, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the cake in a minute, but let's move on to this next bit. So it's asking for, so my onions are done, but they're going to continue to cook in this next sesh, in this next bit. So it's asking for a sprig of fresh rosemary. Um, don't take it off the stalk. I think Mandy, you were saying you did that and it, it kind of ends up all over the recipe. Yeah. So leave it, leave it whole. So that's going to go in. Um, also going in is my, now it asks for 200 grams of rump steak. Um, I bought some, I feel that it's kind of all I could find at the supermarket at the moment. It's a bit, bit crazy out there what's going on. Um, empty shelves everywhere. Um, I think it's roughly about 250 grams in that little bowl. Now I've sliced it on the by, so you want to go against the grain so that you end up, um, it ends up pulling apart. Um, if you cut it along the grain, you'll get chewier texture, so against the grain. And it basically says when you put it into the bowl to try and ensure the steak is even distributed around the mixing bowl. One of the things um, we saw recently is Nico Moretti did a cooking class for us there's so many benefits of joining the team because you get to do all these things behind the scenes, which is fabulous. So Nico, who's my competitor at the moment because he's um, representing WA, um, he does, he's a professional chef, so he runs classes, he's got his own books and things. So he used the butterfly to help the meat to continue to stir. I'm going to give that a go. Let's see what happens. The worst case scenario, it ended up, you know, looking or resembling minced meat, but that's okay. I'm going to eat it either way. But let's see what happens. So I'm going to use the butterfly. Sorry, I'm just going to chop it, chip in there. Um, you're not worried about it with the high heat? No. Okay, cool. Don't want melted butterfly. No. Well, I guess we'll find out in a minute. We will. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how we go. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see how this, what this does. Um, I, I actually think what we'll end up with is lots of meat wrapped around <laughs> the butterfly. But we'll see. Let's see what happens. I'm happy to experiment. At the end of the day, I've got a cell that I can eat, so that's good. <laughs> okay, so after that goes in, the splash guard goes on. So we're using the high heat function now for those that don't have the six. So we're talking about browning of meats and vegetables. So we're using the splash guard. So measuring cup comes off, splash guard goes on. And you'll see the little waves, which is our high heat symbol. Turn the dial. I'm just going to basically sear my steak, which is going to take about six minutes. While you're doing that searing, you're getting the rest of your salad ingredients ready. So you ask the cherry tomatoes, got some gorgeous tomatoes growing in the garden, thanks to mum. Um, there's some tomatoes, rocket, there's, um, sorry, I should read through the recipe. Tomatoes, it's got oh, caper berries, um, basically capers, which are quite large. I haven't got any, so I've left. It's asking for some rocket leaves and some avocado and pop those into a large bowl. So they're ready to go. Um, the next part is to do the dressing, which includes walnuts. So I've just run some walnuts on top. What the heck? We'll get it ready to, um, to go. But I don't know if you can hear it searing. It's actually sizzling. So you can actually hear frying sounds in your thermomix, which is awesome. Wonderful. Thanks, Irene. Um, 
just so the high heat goes up to 160 degrees. All right, we are back to Helen if she's okay and ready to have us. I'm muting myself. I am ready. I've just poured it out. So this is what it will look like. So it'll get quite foamy inside. It'll get quite foamy inside. So I've just tipped it out into my strainer. So I tipped it into my um, Varoma, I used that as a strainer. I'll show you um, at the end um, all the peeling that was left over. But all I'm doing right this minute is cutting my um, beetroots in quarters and then I'll continue with the recipe. Um, do you, you have a minute to go to someone else? Yeah, I'm um, yeah, happy. Um, uh, you can come to me, Boone, for a minute. Thank you. Cool. Okay. So um, I hope you're learning heaps. And, you know, now you can see all those wonderful tips that Irene has too. She really deserves to to be our um, Thermo star. So um, yeah, love it, love, it, love it if you could get behind her. Okay, so on another note, this is what she was really meant to be talking about when we were when she was <laughs> doing her onions. Um, we have a trade-up offer coming for uh, people who have a TM5 or a TM31. Um, that's coming between the 14th and 28th of February. And it is uh, basically, when you send back your um, older model Thermomix, you can get a TM6 for 1999. So if that's something that's of interest to you, um, hopefully you, know, you are gonna learn a little bit more about the features that the TM6 has compared to the other um, Thermomixes, then um, please get in touch with your consultant and they will help you through all that. We're still finding out a little bit more about it as well and, and how you can actually go and purchase. But um, please let your consultant know if it's of interest and we'll be happy to keep in touch and, and help you along the way. Um, who else are we going to go back to me? Are you back to you now? Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. I did forget to show you what it looks like when it comes out. So I hope you can see it's all peeled, it's all washed, and it's just ready for me to cut into quarters to use for my recipe. So Such I'm a great going thing to with beetroot too, so you don't get bright red fingers. I know, that's all oh, I've got. Yeah. I don't need to do anything. Everything's clean now. So I'm going to do a beetroot salad. I'll bring you down here, a bit closer. Okay, so let's start cooking. So place your 400 grams of beetroot. So all I did, I just rinsed out my bowl. I didn't actually have to do anything else to it. Pretty easy. So 400 grams of beetroot. Next is 100 grams of carrots. I didn't peel my carrots with my peeler because there's only two, so I just did them by hand. A uh, quarter of a red onion. I don't have quite a quarter. I'm just using what I have left over because I made this the other day, so I don't have a lot left over. Um, now, one green apple. I'll put that in there. One green apple, and it says approximately 95 grams. So if you did want to weigh it, just to be sure you're not adding too much, there's three little dots next to the next button. You can just um, click on that and you can bring up the scales. And then, so this is while you're in a recipe, you can bring up the scales and then just use them as you need them and then just cross back out of it back to your recipe. Uh, two to three sprigs of fresh coriander, leaves only. Now I do have a question, Mandy. Is this a sprig or are each of these sprigs? Uh, well, what to me, think? a sprig is yeah, is that whole thing. The whole thing, okay. Yes, but I, it probably depends on your taste and how much. I mean, I love coriander, so I'll have as much as possible. Yep. But exactly, <laughs> so do I. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Zoom as well. Twenty grams of lemon juice. and a pinch of salt to taste. Insert the measuring cup lid, sorry, insert the lid, I should say. I'm going to turn this speed selector dial to speed five for two seconds. A 
And sorry to interrupt everyone, but Mandy, my... Yeah, off you go. Yes, we need to go back to Helen. I'm oh, sorry, back to Wendy. Sorry. Wendy. Quickly. Okay, so this steps really quick. So immediately at around the blaze, the reserve sifted, sifted by carbon soda, which I'm now doing. Sorry, Helen. No, you're fine. Perfect, because I couldn't okay, find my next, spatula. Now I've got to quickly stare with the spatula until the mixture foams up, taking care not to overmix. So it's now foaming, and I'm too nervous to take the bowl off. I'm going to mix to show you. But I think we're nearly there, and I can take it off and then show you. And then I'm going to transfer immediately to the bowl, to the tray, and I will show you all quickly. Isn't that amazing? And sorry, this is a really quick action, everybody. Has to be quick because it's so sticky. Get it out. Sorry. Nearly there. Doing a great We're job. Working against the time. The kids are going to love this. They're going to make some ice cream tomorrow with frozen bananas because that's the quickest ice cream I can make for them. Absolutely. And they're going to have the topping. And I'm now what I'm going to make sure is with the bowl, because it sets so quickly, I've just got to wipe off the access, excess with bowl so that it doesn't get stuck in the locking mechanism. And what I'm going to do, just before I show you it in the tin, I'm just going to have to pour in the liquid, the water. So a thousand grams of water. And with the TM6, we've got the pre-clean feature. So in goes the water. Sorry, this is so rushed, but it's such a delicate operation with this setting. And then the vinegar. And this just helps with the pre-clean mode because it is so high. Oh, I've put a bit too much vinegar in there, but at least it's not dishwashing liquid. I'm not going to have lots of foam everywhere. Yeah. So that's okay. And then I'm going to turn that to start and it's going to start cleaning that for me. So I don't have to worry about a gooey mess. Now I'm just going to show you the honeycomb. I can't tilt it too much because it may fall out, but I will show you when it's set. So Wonderful. You can see it's to the height of the tin and it will set beautifully. And hopefully that's pulled down enough by the end of the um, presentation. If not, we'll take some photos and send them into the, the presentation for you. So at the end of it, I'll come back. I'll just let Helen finish her presentation off seen as I've gate crashed and you can come back to me, Boone. That's fine. Thanks, it was perfect Wendy. timing. <laughs> perfect timing because I lost my spatula and I had to try and find where I put it. <laughs> anyway, so I've done two seconds on speed five and that's what it looks like. So it's still in quite big chunks. So all it's asking me to do now is to scrape down the sides. So basically just pushing everything back down to the bottom. You don't need to take your bowl off to do that. You can just do it like this. Next, another two seconds on speed five. Now it says to repeat if necessary until you have the desired consistency. So I'll just have a look. Now I, that's a little bit too chunky for me. So I might do it one more time. And what I'll also do, because there's a lot in there, this really does make a lot. I'll just make sure I really scrape it up from the bottom, making sure there's no big chunks sitting down the, sitting down the bottom under the blade or sitting at the top where it's not getting chopped up. So just giving it a good stir as well. And I'll just do two more seconds, I think. So we just have to go back and we can just do that again.
and it should be fine. And that's how I like my salad to be. So I'll plate that up and show it to you when you come back. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, Boone, if you could come to me for a minute, please. So um, as I think, um, as, as, you know, as I said earlier on, and Irene's also mentioned, we'd love to have people join our team. So um, you can see we actually have a lot of fun doing these. We did them a lot towards the end. Well, we did them, done them a lot during lockdown. We've got a lot of videos, um, but we would love to have you join our team. Hopefully we've got a, another couple of people coming in shortly. Um, but if that's of interest to you, it's, yeah, we, we, know, we just have a lot of fun. We learn a lot. Um, you know, we've got people like Irene around who I've learned so much from. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just fun. We all enjoy it. Otherwise we wouldn't be here, I guess. So I'm just very quickly going to show you um, a little bit of cookie do. So this is our recipe platform. And there's the beetroot salad because I was um, putting out all those recipes. So this is the, um, the front page of our cookie do. And if you don't have cookie do, you know, if you're a TM31 owner, you can still, you can do a 30 day free trial of cookie do and see if it's something that you'd like, because I know you can't cook off the screen, but often um, I know a lot of TM31 owners, just Google recipes, it's the same deal. Um, but you can actually use this better because you can, um, you can create your own list of recipes, you can um, create your shopping list and plan your week, et cetera, et cetera. So it is available. And as I said, you can have a 30 day free trial. When you buy TM6, the first time you log into Cookie Do on the screen, it gives you um, six months. But if you do the 30 day free trial to start with, you know, and you, and you get your TM6 maybe a week or so afterwards, you definitely got a little bit more extra time for free. All right, so this is the front page. And this is something I just noticed the other day. So I did do a session on this um, on Tuesday night. Um, but they've got um, some recipes. These are latest recipes. Doesn't, that looks just so exquisite. I'm sure I couldn't plate up anywhere near as nicely as that, but it looks delicious and sounds delicious. You know, it's got ice cream in it. So that's, for me, that's a winner. Um, and, um, but you can also have a look for you. So it's looking at recipes that it thinks that I might like. And you can also look at themes. So they've got some things here on um, eating green. You can click in there and have a look. So eating green is not green food. It is um, plant-based fruits. There's a whole lot of different things in here. Where to start? Here are some great vegetarian um, go-tos. Those vegetarian sausage rolls, you would not know. When I first made them and gave them to my husband, he had no idea there was no meat in them. So if you've got someone who, you know, you want to get some more uh, veggies into, but, um, but it's definitely a good um, option. So all those things are there um, available for you. Uh, let's come back up here and you can start searching in here. So, oh, look, here we go. Look what I searched for last, ice cream. So uh, this is actually um, one of the latest collections that we've got. Actually, there's a couple of them, I think. Uh, and these this just showing up some of the ice creams. Top tips for per perfect ice cream. And it's the perfect time of year. And we've got a few hot days coming up, I believe. So um, great time to make some ice cream, except I'm going camping, so I won't be able to make it. But let's go collections. So in the collections, here you can see there's some um, ice cream. Um, it's got some, some things that are not ice cream, but these are definitely ice cream up here. Uh, and you can, if I just take that out, you can see it, mine shows the most recent collections. Now, the reason why I have a couple of the same collections is because I'm looking at recipes from Australia, the United States, and the United Kingdom. All right. So, but, and these actually, these, these are really interesting because these are the top uh, 10 recipes, um, cookie do recipes cooked last year in three different countries. I'll just show you because I think it's quite amusing. This is Australia. So we've got a lot of chicken, more chicken, chunky bolognese. Definitely a fair bit of meat in all of that. But um, those are the top um, 10 recipes cooked in Australia. Oh, hang on, let's come back here. These were the top 10 in um, the United States. That Bass cheesecake is to die for, by the way. Um, yeah, you can tell it's shrimp in there. And these were the top 10 recipes in the UK. 
So generally, oh, Bez Pearl's favorite recipe, five second traffic light salad, we made that last week. Um, so quite interesting, I thought, to see the different um, demographic and, um, and what was most cooked. But you can have a look, sc scroll down, have a look. Here we are, there's a whole lot on you. Um, basics for a blade cover, the blade cover peeler. If we just click in there, there are 19 recipes. It's got TM5 and TM6 versions. Um, these are using the sous vide function, which you can use with the blade cover in there. Um, it's got some um, having peeled your carrots. Um, I don't know what that is on top of there. We better find that out. That looks really interesting and terribly like could be marshmallows. It looks like something. marshmallows. It is. Oh my, sorry. Um, I have to tell you a funny story. There's no one from the from the US on here. Um, we went to America. We were served up sweet potato, and they gave us brown sugar on the sweet potato and extra to have on the side. Oh my goodness, that makes me think of the marshmallow thing. Um, I won't be making that one. Um, but I might go. Well, I'd like to try the sous vide turkey breast. So I'm going to put it into a collection, and I'll just I'm going to put it to my collection A because it's easy to find up there. Okay, and I might say, well, um, I'm going to add it to my week. So I'm going to pop it in. I think that's more of a weekend thing. I'll do it on Sunday. Um, I'm going to save it, and from here I can also add it to my shopping list. Um, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll find those recipes a little bit later on. Now I'm gonna go out of collections. You have got articles in here too. So there's a whole lot of different things, you know, um, tips on how to make, you know, really good short crust pastry, rolling out your pastry. Irene's are, are professional at that. So we've, well, I've tried to improve. I think I've improved slightly from her tuition. Um, and then we can go back into recipes. Now, if I take out these filters here, you will see that at the moment we've got 9,527 results. If I do that, we've got 78,000 results, okay? But they're gonna be, some of them are gonna be in different languages, which I do know that that's pizza dough, um, that I don't understand. So what I can do is put filters in here, and usually I go down and set up my languages first. So I put English in there, and you could just leave it like that, but I generally put Australia, United Kingdom, United States, and because they're all, all in English, but you can see there's other um, countries there as well and other languages that you can use. So I've got 8,476 results. Um, I can then go in here and if I want to look for, say, let's do, be a little bit green, let's have a, a main dish that's vegetarian. Um, I might want to then, um, maybe I've got an ingredient I need to use up in the fridge, I can pop it in there. I might want to, you know, have a tag. Maybe it's dairy-free or gluten-free um, or budget or any of those things. You can pop those in. Difficulty, I don't worry too much about because it's um, uh, because we're just following instructions off the screen. Um, preparation time, I don't worry too much about, but I might want the meal on the table in 30 minutes. Pop that in there. I might want it to feed four. And here we go. These are my results. So I can look through here. Um, I've got you know, soups, risottos, stroganoffs, all these, that actually looks amazing. Why have I got a stroganoff, didn't I? Oh, mushroom stroganoff. <laughs> it's not a meat one. That one looks absolutely delicious. So I might want to have a bit of a look in here, um, 25 minutes. It shows me the, um, I know it's a, an English one because it's aubergines, not eggplant. Um, I can come down here and it will actually give me the calorific content, um, the protein, the carbs and the fat as well. If there's any particular tips, it will um, give you the tips in here too. So you can make your own peanut butter. All right. So um, what I would do, if I wanted to make a collection of vegetarian recipes, I would just keep adding them into a collection. I'd go through everything that I've um, filtered into here and um, do it that way. Uh, then if I wanna find those recipes, I come into um, created recipes here, uh, created collections and there's that sous vide turkey breast I put in there. And you can see I've got, um, that's the steak, that is delicious, I've made it before, that's what Irene's making, uh, absolutely beautiful. But there's some really great um, meals that you can have on the table in 30 minutes and so on. You can have all sorts. We've got cocktails, curries, dips, whatever you decide to put in there. Also under created, oh, hang on, sorry, under all, we've got created recipes. And these are recipes that I have put in, I haven't put in, um, 
photo yet on that one. But these are recipes that I've uploaded to the um, to the platform, which I can then cook um, off the screen of my Thermomix. This one was uploaded from, you can see that's actually got a TM31 in the corner, that's uploaded from the recipe community. But the other ones I have put in. So if I click on there, put this one in the other night, um, that's really simple. Um, the mango, just got my ingredients in there, um, almond milk or remaining ingredients, two minutes speed 10, super easy. Uh, okay, and then we'll go back into here. The other things you can have are saved collections. So in here, I've got a blade cover basics one. So cooking your potatoes, making stocks, all sorts of things in there. Um, and whatever you choose to put in there, we've got a cooking with high temp, various other recipes that you can use the, um, the high heat, um, cooking with sugar stages. So with the sugar stages, which is what um, Wendy was doing with the honeycomb, I have made the caramel toffee before, and it is very, very specific. So it's, I cut up the butter too finely and it wouldn't actually work. So you do need to absolutely follow it um, to the T. Then if we go to my week, these are the recipes we've done today. Um, I've put a few things in my shopping list. Um, I, think I've, I think I sent that one to my husband. Uh, and I can click into my shopping list and I can go through here and go, well, I don't need to buy water. I've got the butter and so on. So you click off the things that you don't need. Some of it's in Italian because one of the recipes I want to make is Italian. Um, I don't need the salt. I don't need the pepper. Uh, and I might want to add some extra things. So let's go cherries because there are good cherries out there at the moment. And then what I can do from there, if I've, um, I, if you can have the app on your phone. I just take the app um, with me, my phone with me, click off the ingredients um, as I put them into my basket, the supermarket. You can order your ingredients. So you can come in here and you can go to Woolies online as long as you've got a Woolworths account and you can click and collect or they will deliver. If you don't like their brand, then you swap it out. Um, so that's really easy. You can also um, share. So you can copy this and you can send it to someone in Messenger, or if you're on your phone, you can just um, share it from your phone and send it to someone in a text. So that's what I tend to do. It's very helpful. Um, yeah, so that, that's sort of cookie do in um, a nutshell. Um, yeah, with the TM6, there are no limits, Joanna, that's quite correct. All right, so we probably need to go back and see what Irene's up to. How's she just going? Please, Boone. Had to turn my machine back on. <laughs> You're talking too long, Mandy. No, it's all good. <laughs> so my beef is done. Um, so to answer your question, um, no, it did not melt my butterfly. Um, it actually popped off though. I think there's not enough quantity in there. And I think at one point the meat just lifted it up the base. So I think I would use it where it's a full bowl of food. I actually think it, it actually does consistently cook it. So interesting to see if it makes a difference. Anyway, I guess we'll find out. So this goes on top of my salad, not the juices, because we're going to use the juices as part of the dressing. So essentially, pardon me, I should move this closer to me, okay? Make my job a bit easier. As I said, I have made this before and it is so delicious and it's really quick and easy to make. It's been longer because of it's, my chatting, of course. really, really quick, actually. Um, so six, seven, it's eight minutes of cooking. Very little prep. It probably took me five minutes to cut the steak and the onions. So the rest is really, really quick and easy. And you can certainly chop the avocado and put the rest of the ingredients in. So I've got my meat juices in the bottom there. So it's asking me for my, the rest of my ingredients which I've got in this little bowl. So there's a 30 grams of walnuts, 20 grams of oil, <coughs> some lime juice, some honey, some sea salt and some black pepper. That's all going in. Along with the meat juices, remember don't pour them into the salad, not yet, anyway. And then the lid goes back on essentially three seconds. 
on speed bike. And that's it, pour the dressing over the salad, mix it really well and serve. So I'll do that while you guys move on to... Wonderful. We're just going to go back and have a look and see um, everybody's dishes. So um, let's go to Pearl. How'd you go, Pearl? You're mute. You're mute. I'm redoing the whole thing because it's quick and easy. So I boiled my eggs and I'm doing it again. Right. Okay. So should we come back to you then? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Please. All right. Okay. Can we go to, um, we'll go to Helen here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Hello again. Okay. So here is my final product. This is my beetroot salad. So it's still got a little bit of chunkiness to it, but not too much. Just the way that I like it. It tastes awesome. And this is not all of it. It's a big bowl. It's not all of it. There's still probably a half of this again in the, left in the bowl. Wow. Um, so this is what I had left over as the pulp ah. from the skinning and the cleaning. So, you know, it gets quite a bit off um, without taking too much from your vegetables. Um, um, also, I won't yeah. ask you to do that now, but I'd love you to taste it. Um, oh, sure. I can taste it. No, 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 not that. No, no, the pulpy stuff. Oh, not this. But this. You don't really. have to do it now. But I'm just, I'm just wondering whether it's something. If you had a dehydrator, if you could dehydrate it and use it in things or not. It just tastes like skin. Okay. A bit, a bit like dirt. Okay. Yeah. All right. A bit like Fair dirty enough. skin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> skin. Um, also, what I wanted to say about the peeler as well sorry, peeler slash blade cover, which is important because uh, you can't buy the old blade covers anymore. So this replaces the other blade cover as well. Uh, fully dishwashable, so it can go in the dishwasher. But all I did was rinse that. So it's so easy to clean. So when you're using it as a peeler, it goes with the blades, the normal direction with the blades, and it will chop um, all your peel and thing off your um, vegetables. But when you're using it as a blade cover, as with the other blade cover, the blades are going in reverse. So when this moves in reverse, the peeler isn't activated at all. So it won't chop up um, your food that's in the bowl as you're using it as a blade cover, whether you're doing sous vide or slow cooking, anything that requires the blade cover. Wonderful, you thank, you. thank you, Helen. Um, just another point no with that salad. I think that salad, you can have it like as an everyday salad or you can actually, you can gourmet it with, um, you know, with, with a bit of spinach underneath and some, you know, some goat's cheese or some feta or something on top as well. Make it really special. Well, you're right. You can really have it as an everyday salad because I've had it every day this week. Oh, yeah, me too. Because I made it on, when did I make it? I made it on Sunday. Um, and as I said, it makes a lot and it was feeding three of us and we've still been eating it. So we finished it last night. Now oh, I've made another whole Time batch. for a new batch. <laughs> I know. But I paired this with some potato salad that I made as well. And um, then we just had some meat with it too. So yeah, no, it's an awesome salad. Tastes yummy. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. And, and it's just, um, yeah, it's just so quick and easy and versatile. It's great. So quick. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, um, Helen. That's no great. Right. Um, can we go back to Wendy? Please. Hi there. Unfortunately, it's still not cool enough for me to break up for you. Um, so I can't show you the broken up um, honeycomb. Um, but this can be used on um, ice cream or in between cakes or sprinkled on other desserts. Best to keep it in an airtight her airtight container for up to about a week um, but yeah this is honeycomb and um, you can also layer it with chocolate if you want a little bit of a sweeter dessert um, but we will pop some photographs up um, in the presentation for you for when it's nice and cooled down lovely thank you so much wendy that's fantastic all right okay. now who's ready pearl no. pearl you're ready pearl yes oh look look at those yeah. so this is what my eggs look like that's fantastic. Yeah. So 
what I did was I boiled eggs. Fortunately, I've got chickens. So I've got heap of eggs. So I boiled another six eggs and I put the yolks again in the thing and I, it was, it's fine now. I can just see you going out to chickens. Come on, girls, lay it, lay quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Pearl. And back to um, Irene. Um, oh, my so God. The recipe says beads two. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but um, I reckon there's at least enough there for four very, very hungry people. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's... And it, it looks but so it looks delicious. great. And I had a bit of a taste. It's actually quite... Quite lovely. So um, definitely one to add to your repertoire. Wonderful. And uh, Vicky, that probably answers. Vicky was asking if you could double the meat, which we said no. Uh, yeah. So of the I high did, heat. Yeah, no, actually, mine was roughly two fifty. So probably not double, but you can definitely increase it. Um, I had no problems. It didn't allow me. Now, okay. I said that the rule is stick with the quantities that are there. Um, if you're wanting to increase it, I think there's other recipes of browning. So you could do like 400 grams of meat um, with the onion. So there's other recipes that build that into it. So there's options, other options within um, some of the other, other recipes. And really that's all this is at the end of the day. And then just blitzing the rest of the ingredients and creating a dressing. But um, it tastes great, looks great. Um, and definitely one that um, you know is really quick and easy, particularly with these hot days we're going to have in the next, uh, over this next week as well. Yeah, wonderful. I love um, Vicky's comment, us Greeks love meat. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I need a lot of red meat, um, Vicky. Um, Dad had it, obviously, um, Dad ate it almost every night um, before he passed away. Oh, but that wasn't why he passed away. Um, <laughs> um, he was quite skinny, actually. He was um, completely opposite to me. Um, but he would have loved his red meat, whereas Mum and I, uh, we eat a lot of stuff out of the garden. So Mum's growing tomatoes and zucchinis and lots of beautiful um, vegetables. So we're very much more vegetarian here. So this is a bit of a treat for me to have, um, to have a bit of steak. So, um, but yeah, look, it is, um, you know, everyone relates us to thinking, you know, we're eating, probably having lamb for breakfast, but um, certainly not in this house. <laughs> Thank you very much, Irene. Boone, if you'd like to come back to me. Thanks. So I just want to really make sure I forgot to thank the team last week and I felt really bad about it too. So um, they do an amazing job giving up their time. Uh, I didn't have to cook tonight, which was really nice. I had a very long day at work, but they've done an amazing job as usual. And I think they've shown you some really good um, features of the TM6. Has anyone got any questions? No. Um, um, can I just interrupt? I didn't show my bowl. There it is. Spark oh, hang on. Um, we'll have to go back to um, Wendy, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Can you see that with the light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, we just want to... So thank you all for coming along. Please get behind Irene. Please vote for Irene. Um, she absolutely deserves to win and for her charity to, to win. Um, I'm away next week, so we haven't got anything planned for next week. The week after, definitely on the Wednesday, there are three of us team leaders doing an Easy Essentials class. So if you haven't been along to one of those, look out for that um, or ask your consultant um, to find out a bit more about that. I know Jenny's going to post that next week. Um, and then I'll be back the following week. And um, thanks, Belinda. Thanks everybody for your nice feedback. Um, we'll, you know, we, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing some more things. So watch out. Um, watch this space. Uh, if you're interested in in a trade up, let your consultant know. If you're interested in the current offer, let your consultant know. And um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for coming. <laughs>